In this video, I just want to take the time to review Bubble's announcements about their new AI app generator. Now, if you've been working with Bubble in the past, you might have known that they'd previously built an AI page generator. And when that came out, if you would have told me they were just using a stock standard template that they changed the color of for every different person, I genuinely would have believed you. A lot of the templates looked pretty generic and similar to each other. Not to mention on top of this, all of the elements inside those templates were static. So particularly when you're creating a dynamic web app using Bubble, this wasn't of much use. But if you're in the world of Bubble, you would have seen last week that they announced their new AI app generator. So this is their kind of challenger to the whole vibe coding movement that's happening at the moment, where you can create an entire app with nothing but a few prompts. So this then begs the question, are we now moving into the era of vibe no coding? Look, the big problem with vibe coding is that although it can generate an initial version of an app for you, it's often quite difficult to still understand how it's built and then make changes. So I can definitely see the benefit of using something like Bubble, which is still a visual interface tied in with some AI superpowers where it can then do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So what I want to do in this video is actually take a moment to walk through the new AI app generator and show you what it looks like on my end. And then while I'm doing this, I just want to run you through the pros and cons that I've found throughout the entire feature so far. Now look, at this point in time, unfortunately Bubbles only released the first part of this tool. So their AI tool is able to generate dynamic web apps for you. But the exciting feature that's yet to come out is the ability to then use AI to make on going changes to that app. So this is their feature that they call Iterate. It allows you to just iterate on small sections of your app instead of generating an entire big app at once. It just breaks it down into smaller little components that are much more manageable. But look, at this point, I feel like I've done enough talking. What I want to do is run you through what this experience looks like inside of my bubble editor, and then I'll walk you through all of the pros and cons as they come along. Let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so over in my Bubble account, we're going to take this new puppy for a spin. Now at the top of my Bubble account, what you'll notice is I now have two options. I can either create a brand new app from scratch, or I can create a new app with AI. Now what I'm going to do today is just run through the process of how you can actually create one. It is quite similar to the previous process of creating an AI page, which was kind of like a static template, but the end product itself looks quite different. And something I found is that it takes a little bit longer to actually generate the page itself, or I should say generate the entire app itself. So what we're gonna do is run through this process. Then once we've seen how everything functions, I can run you through all of the pros and cons that I think when it comes to the new AI feature. So we're gonna create a brand new app here. And the first thing it'll want is to now add a prompt. So I'm gonna type in exactly what I'm looking to create. So in this case, I've already taken the time to create a prompt. So I'm just gonna paste this in, but I'll read this back to you. It just says, I want you to build a marketplace that allows users to rent out their boats. So I guess you can kind of think of this as like Airbnb for boats. It should use a modern design style with orange branding. As a marketplace, users should be able to create profiles, list their boats, accept bookings, and receive payments from each rental. So from here, we're now going to generate a blueprint. And this doesn't take too long. What Bubble's doing behind the scenes is just creating a list of features it thinks I should include inside of this app. Then it's going to display those to me just so I can verify those before it then goes and actually generates the entire app itself. So this is where I can see all of the features that it's pulled through. So my users should be able to be boat owners. So they need to be able to create profiles and list their boats. Perfect. There should also be renters who can browse all of the available boats. There's a feature to be able to manage all of your bookings and approve requests. Of course, there's an option to make payments and then also see all of your booking history. Now, unfortunately, you'll see down the bottom here, it does mention that third-party APIs are currently not supported. So this means that when it comes to things like payments, I don't think it's actually gonna go ahead and create a Stripe integration for me. I'm still gonna have to do that manually myself. But nonetheless, let's take a look at what is going to be generated. Now, of course, if there's a feature missing here, you can add this in and refine your blueprint, but look, I'm quite happy with what I've got here. So now I'm gonna to choose to generate this as an entire app, and this is where things can take a little bit of time. So behind the scenes, obviously, it is literally creating an entire app. For me personally, if I was to do it, it'd probably take a day or two, so the fact that it can take five to seven minutes is still pretty damn impressive. Now, when I was first playing around with this feature and trying to generate my first app, I thought that five to seven minutes was a bit of an overestimation, but no, it really is five to seven minutes. So I'm just going to skip ahead so you don't have to sit here and watch this entire bar load. All right, so it's time to take a look at what Bubble has created for us. I'm just gonna close this little prompt here. When I first saw this, I thought it meant if you take a preview, it'll show you and walk you through everything it's created inside of your editor. But no, this is exactly just how you preview your page like you would for any other Bubble app. 
So I'm just gonna close this for now. And as you can see, we have ourselves a pretty basic looking app. And look, I shouldn't say basic. I mean, all of this was created from scratch with AI. So the fact that I didn't have to build anything here is actually pretty damn insane. But what I'm curious to see is how this differs from the previous AI page generator that Bubble had built in the past. So if I did actually wanna take a preview of this, the first thing I'll be looking out for is if the app is actually fully responsive. So if I reduce the width of my browser, I can see that some parts of it are responsive, but there is a lot of elements here that are not responsive. So that's gonna still require some work. One of the main benefits though, is that Bubble has actually taken the time to generate all of the data inside of my database. So I'm not just looking at a blank app that has no information to show. As you can see, it's added in some dummy images and which look, some of these are pretty questionable. Some are boats. This is a bike, not a boat, and this is a person using a computer. So I'm not too sure why that's there. But if I was to quickly jump back into my app and open up my data tab here, what you'll notice is that it's generated an entire database for us. So it's already taken care of a lot of the heavy lifting there. But one thing I truly love here is that it's also generated some app data. So if I go into all my users here, it's already created some fake accounts. And of course, like any information inside of your database, you can choose to edit this if you would like, but you can also see that it's generated some boats with some images. So if I really wanted, I could swap those out. But what I'm trying to get at here is that it's already taken the time to add dynamic data into our database, which is being displayed here. So it's storing the data of a boat inside of this group and it's displaying that dynamic data. So this is where things are slightly more powerful than the previous page generating experience. But where things get really interesting is when it comes to the workflows. So if I was to open up my workflow tab here, and look, this is using the old bubble workflow experience, but as you can see, it has a bunch of pre-existing workflows already built. So things like if we want to display a login pop-up, which let's jump over into our preview and we can check that out. So if we scroll into the top, I'm already logged in, which when I click that, nothing's happening. So already we're not off to the best start here, but there is meant to be a workflow that runs here when this login button is clicked. But I obviously don't have a login button. It must be displaying a separate logout button. So in order to find that, I'm just gonna scroll through all of my elements here. I can see that we have our pop-up. So this has already been designed. And if we scroll through, maybe we can find in our header, there is a nav menu. I might just close my pop-up there. Um, I can't seem to find anything. So what I'm gonna do is try and type in button. And I can see here, there is a login button. So if I was to click on this and choose to edit the workflow, as you can see, the workflow has already been built. But look, there is a workflow linked to our search button. So if we were to jump over to the preview, what you could do is search for boats and then it would display them below. So you can see this responds based on this workflow here. So if I can now be honest and give an opinion about my thoughts, I think when it comes to the pros, I love that it generates dummy data in the database. That's just something annoying that takes me a lot of time to do, even when I go to preview my app. I think it also teaches you how to create a database. You can just jump between the data tab here and review the structure, and it'll actually help teach you how to understand bubble databases as a whole. But one of the big drawbacks to this tool so far is just that it's so damn confusing. And what I mean by that is if I was to receive, let's say a template, even if I was to buy a template, let alone have it generated by AI, the hardest thing is trying to figure out how it's actually built because there's so many hidden elements here. Like we've got a green sign up button, which I don't want a green sign up button. I can see there's conditions on my login button. And so what this just means is that when I go to preview my app, as you can see, when the login button's not being displayed, I'm a little curious or confused as to why that's not happening. So I think it would actually take me more time right now to go and figure out how this entire app has been built, which kind of defeats the purpose of it right now. If you're brand new to Bubble, I don't think this is the best way to get started. I think it's gonna add more questions to your experience than anything. Although AI is generating the app for you, you still need to have a sound understanding of how apps are built in Bubble in order to actually figure out how on earth it's happening. So that then begs the question, what's the point of this AI feature? Well, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. When Bubble made the announcement for the new AI generator, they talked about an upcoming feature that actually excites the hell out of me. And that is the iterate feature. So let's say if AI goes and generates you an app, as I've just shown you, that's all great to create something that looks pretty, but in order to be able to make changes, right now you're left on your own. What Bubble's planning to release in the future 
is a feature that actually allows you to continually prompt AI and get it to change the app in real time. So you wouldn't actually need to go and sort through all your conditions or build any additional workflows. You could just type in what you want and Bubble would automatically make those changes for you. And look, Bubble talks about this in their launch video, which if you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend jumping over to look at it. But they just talk about how there's a new feature coming out called Iterate, which will actually sit inside of your Bubble editor and you can use AI to change just small sections of your page, not the entire app. So let's say if I wanted Bubble to remove this pricing dial, Instead of having to do that manually right now and worry about how it's going to affect the responsive design, what you could do is just prompt Bubble and say, hey, get rid of this dial here. It would automatically do that and then adjust all of the different sections accordingly. So I think once that feature has been released, that's when we're really going to start to see the power of this new AI feature come to life. It's going to kind of be like vibe no coding if you really want to get buzzy. But in summary, the biggest pro right now is that it can generate dynamic data for you as well as all of the workflows to make your app functional. And look, I really should just show you what some of these look like. So I'm just gonna quickly remove this condition on this login button here. And if I just refresh this page, I should theoretically see a login button and I still do not. So I just need to go to my layout tab and I'm just gonna make this element visible on page load, then refresh the page yet again. And now if I was to click this login button, as you'll see, my pop-up will already be displayed. So this is kind of the cool new feature that's exciting right now, but I think the best of this no-code AI experience is still yet to come. And just like that, you've now had a peek at Bubble's new AI page generator. And look, I shouldn't even say peek because everyone has access to it right now, but essentially I've just given you my two cents on how useful I think it is and also where it's going in the future. Look, I'm super excited for when the Iterate feature comes out. I think that's genuinely going to be a game changer. But for the time being, if I was an experienced Bubble developer, I would still stick with building an app from scratch. Let's keep watching this space though, because so much is happening each month. Now look, as I wrap this video up, it would be criminal for me to say, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with any additional Bubble resources, because at that point, you'll be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial on this channel. For now though, I just want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video, and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.